Hey everyone, I'm Jason and today we are going to talk about structures. So I like to think about structures as a collection of user-defined data types um, used to represent an entity. And this oftentimes this entity is, is an object. So objects for instance are cars and superheroes and things like that from the real world. So object-oriented programming is super useful um, because it brings real world objects into the coding world and structures are you know a pathway to do that and um, this is really great for organization because like let's say you have multiple objects with the same data for instance multiple cars it's almost as if we can store different types of data that each car has and that they share so for instance Cars share the properties of having a model, a year, and gas mileage. However, there can be different cars. So we can have a Mustang, we can have a Tesla, and we can have like a Lambo. So like the, the let's say each car had different types of data inside. The model, the year, and the gas mileage. Obviously, the models would all be different. Um, the years would be different. And even the gas mileage could be different. And you can compare them. So like a Mustang would have... Um, worse gas mileage than a Tesla, right? Because it's like full electric. Anyways, um, these different types of, uh, of structures could all be represented under one like object, which is still a car for each one. That's why I like to think of structures as blueprints, like blank blueprints. So it's like a blank blueprint of a car. A car is a blank blueprint. Like a struct of a car is a blank blueprint, and within that car, there's a model, a year, and like um, how fuel efficient it is, the gas mileage, or something like that. Um, but yeah, in order to really highlight this, I wanted to create some code here, and I wanted to create a structure which represents a superhero. So as you can see on my screen, I'm gonna um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a structure, but um, in order to really be efficient, I wanted to include strings in my structure. So I need a string for the name of my superhero. That's going to be one of the properties of the superhero. So I'm going to put include string up here. And that should work there. Okay. And before I do get into the main code in here, um, I want to create a structure. So I'm going to call struct. And I'm going to call this structure superhero. See, it's really cool because you can define your own. Um, collection of data. So what's my collection of data? I'm going to have a string to represent the name of the superhero. I'm going to have an integer to represent the attack of the superhero. And let's say I'm going to have a float to represent the health of my superhero. And yeah, there we are. We created a blueprint for what we call a superhero. And each superhero, no matter which one it is, it'll have a name, have an attack and I'll have health. Um, yeah, so now that I'm inside main, I can call my um, my my uh, my structure superhero, and this structure I'm gonna identify it as S, just because I want to be specific with which ones I'm talking about. So this structure is called S. Um, so S is name S dot name. S's name is, let's say our first superhero is Superman, right? So there we are. We assigned a string to the name section of the structure. And then now S.attack, see how I'm accessing attack by putting which superhero I want, S, and then dot .attack. Which section of the superhero structure do I want? The attack portion. And I'm going to assign um, 99. Why? Because Superman is really strong, so we're going to give him an attack of 99. Um, and then now that I'm going to access the health of my superhero, like this, make sure you spell it right. Um, let's say Superman was just in a fight, so maybe he has 75% health. That's so why I'm going to put him like a set 0.75 right now. And um, yeah, after I do assign, oh, forgot the semicolon. After I do assign the specific data for my for my blueprint, my structure. Um, I could do. I want to. I want to display it for you guys. So what I want to do is, I'm going to call a function called display stats. So whose stats am I going to display? S's. 
and then I'm going to finish up here. Return zero, just end it there. So now I have to, now I'm kind of showing you guys how um, functions interact with structures. So I'm going to create a function here, and this function is going to be called display um, stats. So this function is just simply going to show exactly what our superhero structure shows. So it's going to display their stats. It's going to display Superman's stats. So display stats. What are we going to display the stats of? Um, the structure called superhero. And which structure are we talking about in specifically? The one that's that we named S. So what are we going to do? We're going to print out, see out, um, displaying your superhero your superheroes stats and then we're going to end it there so essentially again this function all it's doing is displaying the stats of the given superhero that you create um, yeah so what are we going to display what specific stats are we going to display we're going to display the name of the superhero we're going to and then we're going to just print out again the attack the attack oh the attack of the superhero and we're also lastly we're going to display um, the help. So how do you access in this information? Essentially you have to, this is what the user is going to see, the name portion, but where are they going to you know, access the information? You're going to get the name from s.name. Remember, we're specifying which superhero, we called it s, and we're specifying which portion of the data, name the name portion. So if you run it, if you write it like that, you're accessing the name portion of S, and that's where you're going to display next to name. And what was the name? Superman, as we defined it up here. So it's pretty much just access, this function is pretty much just accessing the structure that we already created. So we're going to do s.attack. Right here. And then how can we access health? You guessed it, s dot health. And you see how it's lowercase here because obviously we do find it as lowercase over here. And then we're gonna end it there. Great. So oh and then lastly I have to make sure to um, declare my function. Display stat. Who stats from the superhero? Okay, so from the top, remember to include string because you're using string in your program here. So the first thing I did was create a structure. We called it superhero. Um, we gave it a string to represent the name, an integer to represent the attack, and a float to represent the help. Then all we did right here was um, declare our function because we defined it later. So we're gonna so inside main what we did was we actually called the function or we called the structure superhero and this specific one that we're gonna create we named it S. So for S we gave it the name of Superman, for S we gave it the name the attack of 99 and for S we gave it the health of 7, 0.75. And then we called the function display stats. Remember this is just the function I created to help represent and to really see how a struct um, goes or how a struct works. And over here, all we did was create this this function that displayed every single portion of the structure um, that represents the superhero stats. So we displayed the name, the attack, and the health. And once we run this, it should display every single part of the structure. Great. So see, what is this? This kind of this function helped us realize exactly how we can access information from a, a particular struct. So displaying the superhero stats, the name Superman Attack 99 Health 0.75.
So yeah, I hope this was really useful because structures are really useful in programming and I've been Jason, so glad you watched.